Welcome back to the wonderful worlds of fantasy. This week, we'll be exploring some of the more recent items and creatures seen in the ancient Magus Bride. Whether it be large dogs, tiny fairies, or wandering evils, everything has a root that can be traced back to real-life myths, so let's get started. Once as we discussed last time, both magicians and magi come with a large and diverse history of magic, astronomy, and the unexplained. One of the most critical tools, the wand, is so deeply ingrained in this history that it has a unique history of its own. Wands can come in all sorts of sizes and shapes, from a thin rod to a largely decorated scepter, and have a variety of purposes. Wands can vaguely be traced to the Stone Age in the form of sticks, long rods wielded by figures of power as a status symbol. It then became a part of many cultures, ranging from the Egyptians, who used the wand to send the departed souls to the next life, to the Romans, who used it in the mythological stories, called the Caduceus, which is now a common symbol for medical practices, to the shaman in Central and East Asia, who used it as a drumming stick for ceremonies. The true mystical power of the wand seems to originate most from paganistic and Renaissance movements, where believers of the practice used wands to cast spells and perform rituals. Though the wand, called an athum in these rituals, was used in a more direct, aggressive fashion, many of the concepts can be linked to modern fantastical uses of wand. For example, athoms were carved from a branch of a tree and often decorated for the person's specific nature or characteristics. At other times, they were commonly associated with a particular element, like air or fire. Shamans in East Asia also may have contributed to the magical nature of the wand, they used it for religious ceremonies as well as medical purposes. In the ancient Magus Bride, wands are used as a way to better utilize and access a Magi's magic. Elias possesses more of a cane-like wand, whereas Kais makes her own wand using her magic, hair, and a tree born from the corpse of Nevis, a very old dragon. Kais can perform magic with or without the wand, but it seemed to help her out in sticky situations, like when she wants to return home and needs to transform into a particular creature. Chimeras Chimeras, unlike wands or magi, come from a single source, Greek mythology. The word comes from chimera, meaning she-goat, or the original chimera, originally a fire-breathing beast that was a combination of many creatures. The term now refers to any horrid creation that features multiple animal parts. In the ancient Magus Bride, one such example is Cartophilius's project, and Ruth's beloved owner, Isabel. Cartophilius originally makes chimeras for the sole purpose of experimenting with life and death and finding a way to live without constantly suffering. In Greek mythology, however, the chimera is often imagined as a lion-like creature, possessing a goat and lion head, a lion body, and a dragon-like tail with a snake head attached. Anyone who saw the chimera was doomed to die a terrible death, it was one of the worst omens to have. It was also a representation of an unspeakable, yet nearly immortal evil, only true heroes could defeat it in battle. The story of Heracles is one such example, as he fought off and killed the Nemean lion, an offspring of the original chimera. It is only Bellerophon, a mortal son of Poseidon, and the assistance of Pegasus, who slays the Chimera in one of the most striking tales about heroism in Greek mythology. There are traces of Chimera possibly originating from the Middle East and in Egyptian history, but without further proof, the Chimera is wholly a Greek creation, now a fantastical reminder of the horrors of manipulation. Lean and she the Lean and she is also a direct reference, this time to Celtic culture and mythology. Stemming from the Gaelic word Lianan, concubine, sweetheart, and she, of the fairy mound, Baleen and she is a woman from the fairy folk who comes to steal mortal men's hearts away while also becoming the muse. Her power was often a double-edged sword, giving artists and writers the greatest imagination, but also inevitable suffering and madness. In return, she gains the truest emotion that she craves for all eternity. While not originally portrayed as evil or insidious myths about the lean and she appearing as a type of vampire no doubt stemmed from many fictional tales about artists losing themselves to madness out of creativity and unhealthy inspirations. This was especially popularized by the famous W.B. Yeats, who called the lean and she a blood-sucking vampire. From there on, this myth was passed on by other famous artists until it became a common belief. In the ancient Magus Bride, Aline and she is a resident of Joel Garland's garden, taking on the form of a fairy vampire that can slowly suck the lives out of lovers in return for giving them great talent. 
she intentionally kept herself distant from Joel so he would not die an early death. Unbeknownst to her and Joel, however, she still had an effect of making his garden bloom while also slowly draining him of life. After Joel passes away, she decides to remain in his garden, refusing to find any more lovers to ruin. Next time, cats, banshees, werewolves. In part 4, we'll be looking at more mystical creatures of the ancient Magos bride and where they come from, blank, underscore, blank, underscore, blank, when not finding ways to do more her ships, Natasha can often be found on her Twitter as Adelegenes, or writing more about anime on the blog isn't it electrifying, feel free to swing by and say hi.